In this video we're going to look at the first of our case studies for Augustus's administration of the Roman provinces, Parthia. So the key questions to answer are, number one, why might Augustus have been expected to invade Parthia? Number two, why did Augustus not attack the Parthians? Number three, how did Augustus remove the threat of Parthia? And number four, how did he regain the legionary standards? Um, so just a bit of background to start us off. So Parthia wasn't a Roman province, um, instead it was a neighbouring power. And Rome had had a long, tough history with Parthia. Um, so firstly, we had um, the story of Crassus. He, you might remember, was a member of the First Triumvirate. And he was defeated in the Battle of Carai in 53 BC, where he lost three legions. And the standards, the kind of symbols of those legions, were captured. And this was the greatest humiliation a legion could suffer. Um, so it was a huge, humiliating defeat for the Romans. Um, Antony's praetor, or kind of um, second-in-command, Decidius Saxa, was defeated by the Parthians in 40 BC, and then he also uh, suffered some major losses there in 36 BC, and again lost some legionary standards. So as you can imagine, there was a lot of pressure to avenge all these losses and get back these standards. Um, but instead of going to war against them, Augustus instead sought a diplomatic solution through negotiation. Um, and if we look at why he did this, it was actually quite a sensible move on his part. Um, firstly, his, his dignitas would suffer in the event of another defeat. Um, it would be a really bad look for him. Rome couldn't afford to lose more legions. Um, they didn't want to wipe out more armies when they didn't need to. Parthia was a really long way away. Um, it wasn't kind of a direct and immediate threat. Um, and it would prove a drain on Rome's resources sort of financially as well as manpower. So in his solution, um, instead of invading Parthia, he controlled the Parthian Empire with so-called buffer states. So these were areas between Parthia and the Roman Empire which owed Rome allegiance. So they form a kind of um, boundary or, or wall or border between the two. Um, client kingdoms like Pontus and Bosporus were established. So they were royal, loyal to Rome, but they took care of their own administration. And so this um, gave Rome all the benefits of having um, provinces, but it saved them money and manpower. Um, Tigranes, who was a pro-Roman king, was installed on the throne in Armenia. And colonies of veterans were set up in surrounding areas, and they developed the roads um, so that they could deploy uh, troops quickly and efficiently if they needed to. Um, so if we just have a quick look at the map, we can see Parthia in the green on the right-hand side. Um, Armenia and all these kind of um, client kingdoms in modern Turkey are these buffer states. So they sort of protect the Roman Empire from the Parthians. So it's a way of kind of protecting Rome without having to go to war. Um, and... As we can see in this picture, um, which depicts the return of the Roman standards from the Parthians to the Romans, Augustus managed to get them back, which he was very proud about. Um, so in 20 BC, Augustus went along with his stepson Tiberius to the east and negotiated the return of the standards. So they did this peacefully through diplomacy. And the Parthian king sent his sons to live in Rome, which promoted peace between the two legions. Um, and then later, after that king died in AD 1, Gaius was also sent to Parthia just to make sure that there was a continued Roman presence and keep this sort of peace between them. So key questions, make sure you've got the answers. So why Augustus um, would be thought to want to invade Parthia and why he didn't. How he removed the threat um, of the Parthian Empire and how he got back the standards. Um, if you have any questions, make a note of them and we can discuss them in class.